Hello there, here is part two of the proximal upper extremity for the OT318 York College. Muscles that move the humerus, the muscles will start with the muscles that flex the shoulder, will go through all the actions of the humerus and go through each individual muscle and show you images and discuss them. So the muscles that flex, when we do flexion of the shoulder, that's bringing your hand in front of you above your head, raising the arm straight as you can. So we're moving that humerus straight up towards the ceiling like you're raising your hand in class. And that will include the anterior deltoid. And we'll see that the deltoid has three parts to it. The, and the pectoralis major clavicular head, we'll see that the pec has, pec major has two heads. And the coracobrachialis and the biceps brachii short head. So here, the deltoid has three heads. You can see this. It's nicely uh, presented here. There's an anterior, middle, and a, a posterior head. So when we're doing flexion, we're talking about the anterior head of the clavicle. It comes off the clavicle area. All the deltoid muscles, the three parts of the deltoid, insert into the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. So the action of flexion is accomplished by the anterior head. It can also internally rotate. We'll see that later. Here's another image, and you can see it's highlighted with the anterior deltoid, and the origin is on the clavicle. The insertion is the deltoid tuberosity, and its function is flexion of the humerus. It also can do internal rotation or medial rotation. Here, again, now we're looking at the pectoralis major. So the pectoralis major also flexes the shoulder with the clavicular head. And you can see it has a clavicular head that comes off the medial uh, one third of the clavicle and it's going to insert. See, let's see this image right here. This is another image showing you the clavicular head coming off that medial border of the clavicle and it's inserting into the lateral lip of the bicipital groove, also known as your intertubercular sulcus. You remember that? And this will produce flexion of the shoulder along with its other synergist. We just talked about the anterior deltoid fibers. The coracobrachialis can also be a synergist of flexion of the shoulder. And you can see its origin is from, hence its name, the coracoid process. And it inserts into the brachium of the, of the arm. So it's in the humerus. And that's a flexion of the shoulder. And the coracobrachialis can also do a deduction of the arm, as we'll see later but it's a synergist of flexion. And then the biceps brachii short head, this is another muscle that comes off the coracoid process. We spent a lot of time on this last semester, and you can see the coracoid process is where the short head comes off of, and that's inserting into the radial tuberosity down below on the radius. And its action is weak flexion of the shoulder, but it also can flex and supinate the elbow, as we'll see uh, next lectures. Okay, now let's talk about the extension of the humerus or extension of the shoulder. That's when you have your arms hanging at your side in anatomical position and you bring your arm straight back behind you, like you're going to throw a bowling ball, reaching back like you're going to throw a bowling ball. That's extension of the shoulder. And we have a lot of muscles involved here, the latissimus dorsi, the teres major, his little brother, Remember the teres major, it kind of follows the same route as latissimus dorsi. And then you have the posterior deltoid fibers. And then infraspinatus and teres minor both can uh, ex extend the arm. And then you have the triceps brachii long head also assist in extension of the arm. And now, how the heck does the pectoralis major do that? Well, it only does it uh, from the flex position. So if your arm was above your head, like you're raising your hand in class, and you had to forcefully bring your arm down, that would be done through the pectoralis major sternal head. Okay, so let's look at some of these extenders of the humerus. This is the latissimus dorsi, and this has a big, broad origin. It's coming off of the uh, sacrum, off the spinous processes of all the lumbar, and even the last six thoracic vertebrae and it also comes off the last three ribs. When this goes up to the humerus, it goes in between the armpit and the axilla and wraps around to the front 
on the intertubercular sulcus at the medial lip of it. And the action is extension of the humerus. And just by the, the, the course of those fibers, you can see how it would pull and rotate the humerus. Nice image there of that. Okay, teres major. That's the little brother of the latissimus dorsi. Why? Because it runs underneath the axilla, just like the latissimus dorsi, and it's going to insert on that bicipital groove as well. And its action is extremely, exactly the same as the uh, latissimus dorsi. This picture on the right just says internally rotates, but it also extends the arm. So the action, if you look on the left side of the screen, says origin, inferior angular scapula, insertion, the medial bicipital groove, action, extension, and internal rotation of the arm. And we're talking about extension right now. We're talking about the synergist of extension. And then the posterior deltoid also, if you look at those fibers, they originate on the spine of the scapula and go into a common insertion into the deltoid tuberosity with all the other fibers of the deltoid. And its extension, uh, action is extension of the humerus. It can also rotate the arm, but we're not worried about this right now. We're, we're, we're talking about synergy of extending the arm. Okay, infraspinatus also um, is going to extend the arm. It's also a lateral rotator or external rotator, but we're, we're concerned right now about extension. So the origin is on the infraspinous fossa of the scapula and inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. And its function is extension of the, of the humerus. Terry's mind is right there, right next to it, coming off that lateral border of the scapula. And that inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus as well. It can extend the arm and it can also laterally rotate, but we're concerned about it being a synergist right now. And then the triceps brachii, now that's a unique muscle. It has a long head and this long head is actually originating on the infraglenoid tubercle. There's a typo there, infraglenoid tubercle. And I'm gonna correct that typical. It's T-U-B-U-R-C-L-E, not E-L on the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and inserts into the lecranine of the ulnar. And that functions an extension of the forearm, but it also can extend the arm. Pectoralis major. Now this one, this shows it in the, uh, the arm is in the flex position or slightly abducted and flexed. You see the arm up in the air like he's raising his hand. And gravity would normally bring the arm down, but if you had to bring it down against resistance, the pectoralis major um, is or originating on the sternum and the superior six ribs, and it can insert into the intertubercular sulcus. And therefore, that can also bring the arm down to a flex position from, uh, from I'm sorry, extend it from the flex position. Excuse me, I'm trying to talk too fast. I'll slow down. All right, so the shoulder abductors, just review and I have what's abduction, standing in an anatomical position, then bring your arm straight up to your sides like you're in an iron cross position. And we have two muscles, supraspinatus and the middle deltoid. Supraspinatus is a tiny muscle found within the supraspinous fossa and it inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. It's going to begin and initiate the abduction of the humerus. We talked about this many times how it's the most commonly injured muscle to rotate a cuff. And a lot of times that patient will present to you with a uh, pain as they try to initiate abduction. They have to kind of grab the arm and lift it themselves the first 10 degrees and then the deltoid takes over. So the middle deltoid also abducts the arm. And you can see those middle fibers originating from the acromium of the scapula and inserting into the delta tuberosity. And again, that's an abductor of the arm. Okay, now you had abduction, but there's something called horizontal abduction. And the only one that we are listing here is the posterior deltoid. And then the shoulder adduction. Now, what is adduction? Your arms are out at your side like you're an iron cross and you bring them to your side, to your sides. And you'd have to do that with gravity, it's just no problem. But when you have to do it with resistance, like you're holding yourself in an iron cross on the rings, that's pretty difficult. And you'd have to be using a lot of muscles here. So here are the muscles that do that. Pectoralis major, coracobrachialis, latissimus dorsi, 
the teres major, and the subscapularis. Excuse me. Pectorals major um, from the abducted position and the frontal plane can do adduction. This is a, a good image demonstrating that. And the latissimus dorsi can adduct it as well. You can see that. And the coracobrachialis, looking at its origin from the coracoid process into the brachium, uh, uh, brachial side of the humerus, that can adduct the humerus. A lot of times we carry bags and we squeeze them into our side with those muscles and it gets really tight. And then the teres major, uh, it's latissimus dorsi's little brother, he can also adduct the humerus. Okay, so another one is the subscapularis. That's a unique one. It's found on the anterior side of the scapula and um, it can adduct the humerus as well. Now let's talk about abduction. That's bringing your arms up from the sides into that iron cross position. <clears throat> the posterior deltoid, excuse me, correction on that one. When you're doing horizontal abduction, that's with your arms in the abducted position and you bring your arms behind you, like you're trying to reach behind with both arms. So uh, posterior deltoid would be doing that. It's coming from the spine of the scapula, inserting into the tuberosity of the uh, deltoid, tuberosity of the humerus, and it brings the arms behind you in the horizontal position. That's horizontal abduction. The horizontal adductors are the anterior deltoid. That's bringing it forward from the iron cross position, arms out to your side, and then bring your hands right in front of you, straight across on that horizontal plane, you would have these adductors, the anterior deltoid and the pectoralis major. And here you see that horizontal adduction from the anterior deltoid uh, action, horizontal adduction, you can read it there. And then the anterior deltoid, same thing, you can read it there as well. Okay, pectoralis major, um, the pectoralis major, um, is a horizontal adductor. It has clavicular fibers and it has sternal fibers. So the um, action of adduction is all fibers, both the clavicular and the sternal fibers. The shoulder horizontal adductors, the anterior deltoid and the pectoralis major, again, we, that was just a list of them. <clears throat> excuse me on that one, the shoulder external rotators. Now we have this thing called external or lateral rotation of the shoulder. You remember what that was? So if you're sitting here and your arms are hanging at your side and you turned your thumbs outward and rotated your shoulders as you did that, that would be external rotation. And that's accomplished by the infraspinatus, the teres major, and the posterior deltoid. Here you can see both the infraspinatus and the teres minor involved. This is the infraspinatus on the right, the big arrow, and the small arrow is pointed to the teres minor. The shoulder internal rotators would be the anterior deltoid, pectoralis major, subscapularis, teres major, and the latissimus dorsi. So what is internal rotation? Okay, your arms are in the anatomical position, thumbs out, now turn and rotate your thumbs towards your thighs and internally rotate the, the shoulder. So that's internal or medial rotation is the same same. So the anterior deltoid, we can see the list right here. The only one, there's an extra muscle here. Uh, they see number three, it says long head of the biceps. It's not included in our list of internal rotators, but your subscapularis is there, your pectoralis major, your anterior deltoid, your teres major, and latissimus dorsi, all medial rotate the arm or internally rotate.